So, if you remember, the children had been let out for the day to go to the woods and they had called the brownies to ask them to help them find the tree. Um, and after getting a, bit, a little bit lost. So, after what the brownies had told them, would you climb that tree? Have you climbed trees before? What's extraordinary about this far away tree? So during this chapter, have a think about that. What makes this tree particularly extraordinary? Chapter four, folk in the faraway tree. Before long, the children were hidden in the branches as they climbed upwards. When Mr. Whiskers came back with five other brownies, not a child could be seen. Hey, come down, yelled the brownies, dancing round the tree. You'll be captured or lost. This tree is dangerous. Joe laughed and peered down. The faraway tree seemed to be growing acorns just where he was, so he picked one and threw it down. It hit Mr. Whiskers on the ha hat and he rushed away, shouting. Oh, someone shot me, someone shot me. Then there was silence. They've gone, said Joe, laughing again. I expect they're afraid of being shot by acorn bullets. Funny little things. Come on, girls. This must be an oak tree if it grows acorns, said Bessie, as she climbed. But just as she said that, she stared in surprise at something nearby. It was a prickly chestnut case with conkers inside. Good gracious, she said. It's growing horse chestnuts just here. What a very peculiar tree. Well, let's hope it will grow apples and pears higher up, said Fanny with a giggle. It's a most extraordinary tree. Soon they were quite high up. When Joe parted the leaves and tried to see out of the tree, he was amazed to find that he was far higher than the tallest trees in the wood. He and the girls looked down on the top of all the other trees which looked like a broad green carpet below. Joe was higher up than the girls. Suddenly he gave a shout. I say, girls, come up here by me, quickly. I found something queer. Bessie and Fanny climbed quickly up. Why, it's a window in a tree, said Bessie in astonishment. They all peered inside and suddenly the window was flung open and an angry little face looked out with a nightcap on. Rude creatures, shouted the angry little man, who looked like a pixie. Everybody that climbs the tree peeps in at me. It doesn't matter what I'm doing. There's always someone peeping. The children were too astonished to do anything but stare. The pixie disappeared and came back with a jug of water. He flung it at Bessie and wet her. She gave a scream. Perhaps you won't peep into other people's houses next time said the pixie with a grin, and he slammed his window shut again and drew the curtain. Well, said Bessie, trying to wipe herself dry with her handkerchief, what a rude little man. We'd better not look in at any windows we pass, said Joe, but I was so surprised to see a window in the tree. Bessie soon got dry. They climbed up again and soon had another surprise. They came to a broad branch that led to a yellow door set neatly in the big trunk of the faraway tree. It had a little knocker and a brightly polished bell. The children stared at the door. I wonder who lives there, said Fanny. Shall we knock and see, said Joe. Well, I don't want water all over me again, said Bessie. We'll ring the bell and then hide behind this branch, said Joe. If anyone thinks he's going to throw water at us, he won't find us. So Joe rang the bell, and then they all hid carefully behind the big branch. A voice came from the inside of the door. I'm washing my hair. If that's the butcher, please leave a pound of sausages. The children stared at one another and laughed. It was odd to hear butchers coming up the faraway tree. The voice shouted again, If it's the oil man, I don't want anything. If it's the red dragon, he must call again next week. Good gracious, said Bessie, looking rather frightened. The red dragon? I don't like the sound of that. At that moment, the yellow door opened and a small elf looked out. Her hair was fluffed out around her shoulders, drying, and she was rubbing it with a towel. She stared at the peeping children. Did you ring my bell? 
she asked. What do you want? We just wanted to see who lived in the funny little tree house, said Joe, peering in at the dark room inside the tree. The elf smiled. She had a very sweet little face. Come in for a moment, she said. My name is Silky because of my silky hair. Where are you off to? We're climbing up the faraway tree to see what's at the top, said Joe. Be careful you don't find something horrid, said Silky, giving them each a chair in her dark little room. Sometimes there are delightful places at the top of a tree, but sometimes there are queer lands too. Last week there was the land of Hippity Hop, which was dreadful. As soon as you got there, you had to hop on one leg and everything went hippity hop, even the trees. Nothing ever kept still. It was most tiring. It does sound exciting, said Bessie. Where's our food, Joe? Let's ask Silky if she'd like some. Silky was pleased. She sat there brushing her beautiful golden hair and ate sandwiches with them. She thought she brought out a tin of pop biscuits, which were lovely. As soon as you bit them, they went pop and you suddenly found your mouth filled with new honey from the middle of the biscuits. Fanny took seven, one after another, for she was rather greedy. Bessie stopped her. You'll pop if you eat any more, she said. Do a lot of people live in this tree? asked Joe. Yes, heaps, said Silky. They move in and out, you know, but I'm always here and so is the angry pixie down below. Yes, we've seen him, said Bessie. Who else is there? There's Mr. What's-his-name above me, said Silky. Nobody knows his name and he doesn't know it himself, so he's called Mr. What's-his-name. Don't wake him up if he's asleep. He might chase you. Then there's Dame Washalot. She's always washing, and as she pours her water away down the tree, you've got to look out for waterfalls. This is most interesting and a very exciting tree, said Bessie, finishing her cake. Joe, I think we ought to go now or we'll never get to the top. Goodbye, Silky. We'll come and see you again one day. Do, said Silky. I'd like to be friends. They all left the dear little round room in the tree and began to climb once more. Not long after, they heard a peculiar noise. It sounded like an aeroplane throbbing and roaring. But they can't be an aeroplane in this tree said Joe he peered round and then he saw what was making the noise a funny old gnome sat in a deck chair on a broad bench his mouth wide open his eyes shut fast snoring hard from where I got to. It's Mr. What's-his-name, said Bessie. What a noise he makes. Mind we don't waken him. Shall I put a cherry in his mouth and see what happens? Asked Joe. He was always ready for a bit of mischief. The faraway tree was growing cherries all around for a change and there were plenty to pick. No, Joe, no, said Bessie. You know what Silky said. He might chase us. I don't want to fall out of the tree and bump down from bough to bough even if you do. So they all crept past old Mr. What's-his-name and went on climbing up and up. For a long time, nothing happened, except that the wind blew in the tree. The children did not pass any more houses or windows in the tree. And then they heard another noise, rather a peculiar one. They listened. It sounded like a waterfall, and suddenly Joe guessed what it was. It's Dame Washalot throwing out her dirty water, he yelled. Look out, Bessie, look out, Fanny. Down the trunk of the tree poured a lot of blue, soapy water. Joe dodged it. Fanny slipped under a broad branch, but poor old Bessie got well splashed from head to foot. How she shouted. Joe and Fanny had to lend her their hankies. I am most unlucky, sighed Bessie. That's twice I've been wet today. Up they went again, passing more little doors and windows, but seeing no one else. And at last, they saw above them a vast white cloud. Look, said Joe in amazement. This cloud has a hole in it, and the branch
branches go up, and I believe we're at the very top of the tree. Shall we creep through the cloud hole and see what land is above? Nets, cried Bessie and Fanny. So up they went.